right, who's in and who's out? President Trump announcing today that he is canceling a high-stakes meeting with Vladimir Putin at the G20 summit this weekend, tweeting, quote, based on the fact that the ships and sailors have not been returned to Ukraine from Russia, I have decided it would be best for all parties concerned to cancel my previously scheduled meetings in Argentina with President Vladimir Putin. I look forward to a meaningful summit again as soon as the situation is resolved. Trump also canceling scheduled sit-downs with Turkey and South Korea. So who will the president actually speak to at the G20? Here now is Waleed Ferris, Fox News national security and foreign affairs analyst. First of all, let me start with the fact, how big of a, of a deal is it when you're on the plane, you're on your way over, and then all of a sudden we're seeing notes that he's canceling these meetings? I mean, diplomatically, what, is that, what message does that send? Actually, this is a perfect diplomatic move. Yes, he could be on the plane, he could be in the limo, but basically what has happened is not a decision to decrease U.S.-Russian relations. Actually, we need to talk to the Russians in terms of resolving so many issues, including between Ukraine and Russia and in Syria and elsewhere. But the Russians have captured boats that are part of a sovereign country, Ukraine. And the American position was the president himself said that they need to return those boats. So this action is not with relation to Russia and America. It has to do with that specific incident. And once that specific incident is resolved, and I think it will be resolved at some point, then the president said there will be a summit. So he is messaging very clearly, I want this to be resolved, and then we'll have a summit, and then we'll talk about other issues. Well, how about South Korea and Turkey? So, say it again? How about South Korea and Turkey? Those were also canceled today. Yes. The president is, I assume, I'm not in the administration, but I assume he is listening to his national security assessment that is telling him that with each one of these countries, there are assessments. And those assessments basically wants the president not to do those meetings because there are issues happening. Some are with the countries themselves and some are with a third country. And he's using this G20 uh, series of meetings or non-meetings as messaging, as political messaging. Mm -hmm. All right. So to a meeting that was apparently never on the schedule, President Trump answering questions about a possible sit down with the Saudi crown prince. I would have met with him, but we didn't set that one up. I'm meeting with President Xi, which is a very important meeting, having to do with trade. And as you know, I'm making about three or four meetings. We just didn't have time. So what do you make of that one? Well, that one also is logical. I mean, we are not living in a normal uh, season of international relations meetings. Uh, the crown prince of Saudi Arabia is being criticized and actually, frankly, under assault by his uh, opponents in the region uh, because of the Khashoggi case. But the president was very clear. He will have a measured response to the case, to the judicial investigation once those results are clear, because to me, technically speaking, we don't have uh, a, a clear results on that investigation. We have a general assessment. But at the same time, Saudi relationship with the United States are so crucial in terms of containing Iraq. I mean, we know the whole story. And of course, the Saudi uh, the Saudis today are the heart of a much wider regional bloc, which is the Arab coalition. So he's, he is trying to balance between what needs to be done to message uh, mm -hmm. the crown prince of Saudi Arabia and, of course, the commitment to the Saudi-American strategic relationship. Yeah, but how does that answer change if it's shown definitively? You know, I mean, you say we don't have all the pieces, and, and I mean, it's hard to believe the crown prince wasn't behind that, but say it was even more definitive. Then what do you think the right response is? Melissa, there are too many uh, uh, scenarios. Look, this is, when we talk about the killing of an individual and we are dealing with it, look, in our own cases, we stay years to investigate. I'm not saying that we're going to stay years to investigate this case, but basically, yes, maybe the crown prince knew about it. It will open a chapter. Maybe the crown prince ordered something else. We don't know. We don't have these answers. Yes, it was ordered somehow from Saudi Arabia. I mean, I could spend a long time making all these scenarios. But so far, the president, the White House, and other quarters of the government, they don't have a definitive answer okay. on the responsibility. Waleed, thank you for your time. We appreciate it.